And we came across a well about a year and a half ago. We heard about it from various offices uh, around the world. And uh, we were about to embark on our get out of our London office. So we decided the best way to actually understand was to apply to the office. And a lot of things already were very intuitive and just made a lot of sense. So we kind of just jumped in and, and grabbed a little bit. Let's get that. So the first thing about it is that it's got nothing specific to do with uh, sustainability as such, although health and well is uh, not concerned to sustainability. Um, and it's based on research from Delos Living, who are ex Goldman Sachs uh, investors. You can wonder what are they thinking about in terms of health and well being of buildings, so it's surprisingly somewhat suspicious. And the idea was basically they wanted to have a standard for residential accommodation, which they were thinking of to invest in. And they wanted a differentiator between their high-end residential compared to others. And you can see how quite appealing it would be to even say to the a carriage in the buying apartment that um, if there's probably any way susceptible to uh, asthma or uh, health problems, that this apartment is going to be far healthier than the one beside it. And it's based on decent research from Neo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, and it's matched basically the illnesses that people have and what the environment um, uh, design issues can impact on it. And we've seen a lot in terms of uh, the building councils uh, over the last few years. And one of the things that's become kind of fairly obvious is that the cost of an employer is um, the staff itself. And the energy is about 1%, the uh, employee cost is about 90%. And energy really has driven the sustainability industry and it's a multi-billion pound industry. Well, health and well-being, it is probably correct ninety percent of the value of the ability to trade in that industry. And it's already happening. Think about buildings, we were out there with the bits and everything else, and um, it's it's raging along. And um, we've seen some of these statistics very wrong that improved ventilation can improve your performance by eight percent, reduce absenteeism by thirty five percent. We've seen this quite impressive. Uh, it's quite hard to clean in some ways. Temperature can affect your performance between 4 and 6 percent, and daylight you can increase your sleep at night time by 46 minutes. Um, we've also heard about the, the performance versus the, um, the fresh air provided to people. And one thing I'll say is, will, will everybody improve their performance by 8 percent? I suggest probably not. Um, but one thing that is very clear is that you start putting lots more air in buildings. You've got to provide more space for it, you've got to provide a lot more fan energy, you've got to heat it and cool it. So your energy consumption can go to the roof. So if we are going down those routes, we need to think about how we would control that to the occupancy of the spaces, having variable volume uh, systems that follow the demand um, of the people as they go around the place, not just throwing energy at it. Um, so this is the kind of structure of it. Um, you've got silver gold platinum, which is very similar to uh, the Lee standards. Um, unlike the R brand, getting to the first level in silver is quite difficult. It's very easy to get to a brand good or very good. Uh, the Lee silver, very simple. But certainly the, the silver standard is more difficult for well, in part because it's a new system and also because the uh, well building standard is based on making sure that all buildings have a minimum level of uh, health and well-being. The issues it covers are air, water, nourishment, life, fitness, comfort, and so on. And effectively, all the stresses in the body have been matched to add them within the building itself. So cardiovascular, things like life gloves, smoking, VOCs, immune system affected by sleep, allergens, etc. So every credit makes sense when you look at it. You can see exactly what the objective is. This is the uh, structure of it. You've got registration, which we did about a year ago. <coughs> put it that documents together, which we submitted around March this year. Performance verifications where the assessor actually comes to the building and does all the testing and checking to make sure you have done everything you said you're going to do. And that happened with us three weeks ago. Certification, that happens after that, which we were able to get before Christmas. And one of the important parts is recertification. So every two years, you have to get your building checked to make sure that you've maintained the standards that you to a set place from the start. And this is going to cover briefly some of the credits. It's supposed to affect, affect the fit of the building as opposed to the complete design. Um, but they, they are all part of it. 
And there's a big section on air and water. A lot of the stuff is very straightforward, air quality testing. You don't tend to test for air quality in buildings, but you have to do it very well. Supply air rates are achieved by safety standards, which are higher than actually standards. Smoking bans, very easy. DOCs are put by the board later on. The problem building is related to American standards where you start dating air. Uh, an interesting one is UV light to the cooling coat because you can get moisture in cooling coats which means minor looks of glow. And so the solution then is to put UV light into it. And for fan coals, most manufacturers have no idea how you do that. So it's quite a difficult one to design in. You can get around it by just inspections, but you have to do with fan coals anyway. So again, it's not something that adds cost. Construction pollution, just making sure the manufacturer takes stuff for the ventilation system so they don't get dirty. Cleaning protocol is just that, how you put that clean in the building clean, and the stress is no reduction. So, in terms of water, the standard of water in states uh, tends to be quite poor when you put it in the ground, particularly with fracking and so on. So, they, the standard they've set are quite high. We typically have good quality water in the UK, so you kind of wonder whether it's actually any valid. Um, requirements to have the standards that are suggested, but that's what they ask for. And we're looking at turbidity, inorganic, organic compounds, and agricultural uh, contaminants. If you don't achieve the standards, then you have to filter it. When we went to get these tests done, the first thing was that there were people were charging up to 8,000 pounds for it, because they didn't quite know what they did. We've been sort of done for around 8,000. And we found a number of labs that just didn't cover all these things. They didn't have to do it. So we were looking at it. Somebody. This shows the industry is not geared up for it. In terms of nourishment, uh, you've got to provide food and bed, which is the main one for us. We don't have canteen as such. But you are providing food, you've got to look at the processed food limits, the allergies, and labeling everything. So it's not stopping people making a choice, but you're giving them a choice to help the food as well as their support food and giving them an affordable choice. And then there's issues around hand washing and food contamination and health promotion. So, King and Lighting. We've heard about it earlier on, and there are requirements for that. It doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money on an expensive circadian lighting system. If you're normal LED lighting, particularly you can buy the lighting to get you to that standard. And this is not new. We looked at biometric lighting, we used to call it. This is looking at a hospital pod where the light changes, we've got daylight blinking, and nurse call all into one. And it just shows the changing of the light as you go up throughout the day, the day to reinforce the circadian system and hopefully reinforce sleeping patterns and improve recovery times. In terms of fitness, uh, it's a big issue in the States, but it's obesity as well. But for us, it's about incentivizing people. You're not forcing people to do anything. It's about subsidies, providing $200 to force gyms and $50 to force uh, cycling clubs. Comfort, accessible design, part N basic covers all that. Desk ergonomics is just choosing the right desk, making just the limits of certain ranges. Adding extra cost and noise is standard office design and thermal comfort is safety standard. It uses thermal comfort. Olfactory is about controlling where the air is, so keeping um, kitchen areas and toilets negatively pressurized so that the smells don't escape. Uh, mind, you've got project guide, which really just letting everybody involved in the project know what's going on and get their opinion on things. Health library. Providing information online, hard, thing, um, hard copy in terms of uh, exercise and diet. Post occupancy evaluation is just that. Beauty is great for architects because they can go effectively wild on that. And it's not by any means restrained if you can decide what you call beauty, as we all know it's in the eye of the owner. And there's a whole way, range of things that you need to consider. Things like sense of place or celebration of place. And by a few days, I'll come on to a little bit later on. So this is our office, and in addition to well, we did Brian and SCAN because we wanted sustainability to be part of that whole process. As it turns out, the factory was far more concerned about the well than the Brian and the SCAN, and a certain problem we're planning to achieve. This is our office plate, and the blue bit is the open plan area. And as I said, it's designed to actually standards, sit with a higher standard too, so we did nothing to that part of the office. The red bit in the center is our photocopy room, copying room. So everything is put in there to keep other levels out of the office space itself. And these areas here, this is the canteen in blue, and you've got the meeting areas. And effectively, there's quite a high density potentially of people in these areas. And what well requires is that you have variable volume air systems. Uh, so that's what we put in with CO2 sensing. 
And in reality, you could have done that anyway, because there wasn't enough air in the riser to get to the uh, offices in each of these rooms. And we can take air from the canteen area and push it to the rooms and vice versa. It would be very rare to have the canteen area fully occupied with the meetings as well. And you're trying to get down to uh, 800 cars per minute. Um, materials was a big issue. And because you have to test at the end of it, it's not just like brain, you get pieces of paper and you take the box. If you fail your test, you fail it. So we found it quite difficult to find out whether the manufacturers were able to provide us with tests, etc., that would achieve the standard. And what we did eventually was just get them made locally. The manufacturers gave a statement that it was actually cheaper to do that and we could get a better quality product. This is one of the issues we had to uh, deal with the California Department of Public Health and the South Coast Care Management uh, District rules. Now that's changed a bit because we've gone through the process of the Brian standards are already now in well, but it, it, it doesn't cover everything. And the difficulty is if you ring up a manufacturer and you ask them to they comply with this, they've absolutely no idea, even if they were an American company, that they had that over here. And it takes about three or four uh, transfers before you get to the right person who can actually tell you whether the product actually fits or not. And it's everything. It's looking at um, the, the surface on the floor. We use this recycled plastic called Bolon, which is great. And because it's recycled and it's plastic, it's very easy to clean. So we went for a much lighter finish. So the actual off space clean is much brighter. Um, but it's not just that. The like, things that Graham doesn't cover so well is use. I mean, one of my colleagues was following the, the um, contractors around the site on weekends. They put out the bag of paper and knew that they used last time. Which would be disastrous for us because it's not covered by the specification properly. But at the same time, that's what would impact on the air quality test when we do it. And things like VOCs, I got used to the VOC paint of them, really poor, and uh, twice as long run to the door, went yellow after three months, and then we came the door again. So getting the right color. I mean, we can see even now the paint is, is still the right color, but it's not nearly as durable. You can see that the dirt has got into the paint and to clean it means that you're going to remove that paint much faster. But there's a quote from the contractor, I understand it now, that can eat it and it's, it can install it. Which kind of gives you an indication of the level of frustration you're feeling in the time. What was fascinating too, though, was the guy came in to do the air quality test. The first thing he said, it smelled different. And I noticed that by going to our Manchester office and that it smelled the OCs in the air because they hadn't gone down the street. And it's, it's, it really is. When we, when we did test the air, we were almost three times the VOC levels. And we said, where did it come from? We had our bowl on the ground, we had our, um, our, our handmade furniture. Where does all the VOCs from? And it turns out that just after um, we had put the sensor down to measure the air quality, the uh, landlord had sent in their cleaners to clean the ceiling panels. And they popped them open, took out their usual cleaning products, and started spraying away. So what it showed us was that you could, you could do everything right yourself, but you don't get how people behave in places right. And what, what might be a low VOC carpet initially, you could turn into a high VOC product afterwards, the same with furniture. So you need to know what's happening in your spaces. And air monitoring is one of the benefits. For me, it's really important because people are really used to measuring things nowadays, footsteps, calories, anything that moves, they'll do it. And if you're on phones, and I got an app on my phone, and it's a lux meter, and I can tell you that if I measure the lux meter, it might have a thousand lux, I can get an accurate reading by dividing by two, taking 10% off, because it compared to the property calibrated meter. And the point is that people will be walking up to their employers saying, this isn't a fit place to work because the CO2 levels are really high, as it says on my phone, and employers will need to have some kind of answer for that. And as part of that, we start developing the sensors that measure everything. Knocks and uh, PM10 is 2.5, etc. That's the size of the credit card. And that way we know what's happening in our spaces and we can learn how we're behaving in our spaces. Uh, our water test, we did it and we found that we had failed the nickel contents. So the Thames water was exceeding the World Health Organization <coughs> standards for nickel and for starters. And we had to put this filter in, but we weren't allowed to put it in because it wasn't mass approved. So RAS is the approval system to make sure that we aren't potentially polluting the tenth quarter, but we couldn't put it in and for that reason because it had been tested, even though we were just trying to be very pollution at the tenth quarter in the first instance. And one of these things costs in total
book installed about 6,000 pounds. And we argued with them for three months, eventually gave up, we put in a, domestic, a pair of domestic filters. This one, you can backwash, the next one you can, you've got to change the cartridges, and they're going to cost us 2,000 pounds a year to run that, so we'll be okay. Um, and it's about how the water, not just that it's clean, but it's how well it does. Yeah, it's a very good thing. It's a very bright space, lots of windows, so it's advancing light into the space, you get 20 percent more daylight in the space for the so we potentially can uh, reduce our energy consumption. Uh, nourishment, we heard about getting people to sit together. Well, sitting together means that um, people are also getting into peer pressure, so somebody can back to super side McDonald's one day, they won't necessarily do it the next day. This is a really used space that's just <coughs> off the lunch time in the morning time. We've got brass surfaces, which is antibacterial, same with the surfaces on the, the, uh, the covers themselves. Things like sinks, yeah, there's not much connection there, so that if you don't have cross contamination, you must have paper towels or green teams for years and get rid of them. But the idea is that you can keep your hands and get rid of the bacteria by the, uh, the actual um, action of drying your hands. And things like site to work, all the things that you get every week at this so anyway, you know this adds extra cost to the whole uh, process. And we have yoga classes, we have table tennis and various other things and these. Uh, comfort, it sits in standards, but one thing I'll say is that because it sits in standards, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will actually have a comfortable environment, so it's frozen in the office in August when it's 27 degrees outside. And things like stand up desks, uh, issues around mind and flying out because I'm out of time, so uh, just one or two things. We can get the fellas uh, in the uh, reception area, again, it's a bit of uh, American Lego bridge to me, it's made of wood, we got pants for them. Things like the uh, murals in the wall or mosaics in the walls. For, for the architect, it was on the daytime, nighttime. For me, it was just to make uh, bee, bee hives. Uh, we've done loads of stuff in plants. We've got loads of plants uh, in the space so that it can provide benefit in terms of the air quality. But equally, people take ownership of these. And when you've got one plant between two people and one person leaves, who gets the plant? It's a complicated issue. <laughs> uh, and we're just saying, okay. That's okay. Our moss, our moss is the last thing I want to say. This, this stuff is really tactile, it's really attractive. And we had three panels of this, I did one panel up on the wall, I did it with uh, no nails, I wasn't sure it stayed up, so I didn't put the other two. But the other two I put on the table beside the floor itself, outside the room itself, and was there for two weeks, and people sat at that table in preference to any other table. We could have up to eight people sat at that table with all the other tables empty because that was sitting on the lawn in London. <laughs> <laughs> so that's